A knockout mouse is a literal mouse that is used in laboratory conditions for further understanding of genes and in particular human genes. The term knockout is derived from a gene in the mouse being turned off or knocked out. By an individual gene being inactive, the scientist can observe any differences in the mouse without this gene because of the fact that humans and mice share approximately 99% of the same genes, this method can be used to discover the functions of most human genes. Knockout mice are made in the early stages of embryonic development. The embryonic stem cells are targeted as these cells differentiate into nearly all adult cells. Therefore, the effects of the gene knockout can be observed later in nearly any adult tissue and shown completely after crossbreeding. There are two methods to insert artificial DNA into the embryonic stem cell to create a functioning knockout mouse. In both methods, an embryonic stem cell is altered before being inserted back into the mouse as shown in the picture. The first method, called homologous recombination or gene targeting, is usually completed in the nucleus of an embryonic stem cell. The scientists engineer an artificial gene with DNA sequence identical to that of the gene being targeted, but the sequence of the artificial gene is inactive and will not function. Once the artificial gene has been inserted and is directly next to the targeted gene, the nucleus recognises the artificial gene as the real gene and swaps it out. Once the artificial gene is in place and the original gene is removed, the artificial gene will not function, allowing researchers to observe the differences in the mouse without this gene and therefore the function of the gene. The second method, called gene trapping, is also performed on the mouse's embryonic stem cell. Instead of targeting a specific gene to knock out, a more random process is used to the same result. As shown in the picture, the process involves a small piece of artificial DNA containing a reporter gene, which is manufactured to insert itself randomly into a gene. The inserted artificial DNA piece is designed to prevent the enzymes from functioning properly and prevents the RNA splicing. As the gene cannot be read and the des designated proteins cannot be formed, the gene cannot function properly and is essentially knocked out. The scientists observe the activity of the reporter gene in the artificial DNA to understand the normal gene's activity in mice tissue. The advantage of gene targeting is that if the sequence of the gene is known, it is much more efficient to knock out the gene. However, not all gene sequences are known, which is why gene trapping is used. Gene trapping is less efficient and less specific as gene targeting because the artificial DNA does not always result in the gene losing its function. Gene trapping will also not result in every gene being knocked out at some point because of statistics and further development after the embryonic stage. There are multiple examples of knockout mice being used to discover more about the human genetics. An example of knockout mice in use is the information gathered about the P53 gene, which normally codes for proteins that suppress the growth of tumours. Through knockout mice, it has been discovered that humans with mutations that inactivate gene P53 suffer from Lee-Fromenai syndrome, which dramatically increases the chance of developing bone, breast and blood cancers at an early age. Another example is the use of mice in alcohol research. The knocking out of genes impacting the serotonogenic neurotransmitter system, which is related to alcohol consumption and many other alcohol-related behaviours. It was observed that mice carrying an increased number of Y2L and Y2S genes showed a strong decrease in alcohol tolerance, appearing because of an insufficient overexpression of other genes. The use of mice in the science of knockout mice is surprisingly viewed as ethical by the higher authorities. Although roughly 15% of the gene knockouts are developmentally lethal, 
meaning that altered embryos will never be able to grow into adult mice, it is still legal and heavily followed. The International Mouse Phenotyping Consortium, IMPC, is an organisation composed of 19 research institutions across 11 countries. This massive organisation can create 20,000 knockout mouse strands from a single background strand for use by the research community. IMPC is recognised by the G7 for their contributions to scientific and medical advances, further implanting their validity for being ethical. In early 1999, the Commonwealth Government agreed to implement laws in Australia restricting the use of genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, for scientific uses. Although there were many new laws put in place, knockout mice are completely exempt from these laws as, and I quote, an advantage is conferred on the adult animal. This law means that there are restrictions on manipulating the genetic structure in organisms, but knockout mice are exempt from this law as they provide such a benefit and most mice go unharmed.